What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the stimulus package update, daily news, pretty much everything you need to know about what's going on in our country, Washington, D.C., money, investing, the stock markets. Remember, new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. Speaking of the stock market, the stock market posted the best week since July after earnings and retail sales topped the estimates. And uh, yeah, stocks had a phenomenal week after the debt limit has now been passed. The president signed it into law last night. Remember, it's only a temporary debt limit increase until early December as they've kicked the can down the road. They're going to need to do it again here soon or pass it in the stimulus package. But now that the temporary... Um, default is no longer on uh, the short-term horizon. Stocks posted an absolutely phenomenal week and uh, green means go. So stocks are doing very, very well for the short term. Uh, so yeah, stocks had a phenomenal week. Former President Bill Clinton, who is in the hospital for sepsis, is on the mend at least right now as the affection lands him in the hospital. A source close to the president says, quote, he is trending in the right direction after reports emerged that he is in the hospital from a non-coronavirus related infection. Yeah, a further update on his health is expected later today. Two days after treatment, quote, his white blood cell count is trending down and he is responding to antibiotics well. Quote, his physicians said on Thursday, the California-based medical team has been in constant communication with the president's New York-based medical team, including his cardiologist, and we hope to have him go home soon. Clinton has a history of health issues, including heart problems. He had undergone a quadruple bypass back in 2004 and an additional heart procedure in 2010 to restore blood flow to one of his coronary arteries. So we uh, wish the former president a quick and safe recovery. I will keep you up to date on this. The CDC says according to new data that unvaccinated people are 11 times more likely to die from the virus than fully vaccinated people. Wow, 11 times more likely. Let me know your thoughts on this. The CDC says that unvaccinated people have an 11 times higher risk of dying from the virus than fully vaccinated people, according to new data posted by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The data runs through August and are from 16 health departments representing about 30% of the U.S. population. In addition, the data shows that unvaccinated people have a six times higher chance of testing positive for the virus than fully vaccinated people do. The Senior Citizens Advocacy Group is telling Congress that Social Security recipients should get a $1,400 stimulus payment. They are pushing very hard, pushing Congress to add an additional $1,400 stimulus check into the next stimulus package in addition to the monthly stimulus payments of $250 to $300 for children, the child tax credits. Remember, those are going to expire at the end of the year. They want to continue on those monthly payments called the child tax credits. Those will stop uh, on December 15th will be the last monthly payments um, if they can't pass this package uh, before then. Uh, that will be the last monthly payments for children. They want to extend those on until 2025 or maybe have to cut those and maybe extend them on until 2022, 23, or 2024. Everything is up for negotiation and um, they're really determining the size of the package. The senior citizens group and multiple advocacy groups are pushing to add additional $1,400 stimulus checks or $2,000 stimulus checks into this next package as well. In addition to this, Bernie Sanders is also seeking to add a $1,000 cash voucher that would likely be onto a debit card, a $1,000 stimulus debit card that would be uh, likely for Medicare benefits, uh, stimulus 
debit card for $1,000 to be added into this uh, stimulus package as well. Remember that in the second stimulus check package, they added the stimulus checks in there at the very last moment. They actually wrote the bill. It didn't have the stimulus check uh in the bill, they actually added it in at the very last moment. And in the third stimulus check package, they added in that $10,200 unemployment tax break, which meant that tens of millions of people actually got an extra check or unemployment tax refund that was anywhere from several hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. And that was added into the third stimulus check package for people that had unemployment income that was added in there at the very last moment. In fact, so last moment, the bill was written, the House representative passed it, and the Senate added it in there at the very last moment after the House had already passed it. So they changed the bill, and then the House had to repass it with that in there. So they do actually add in the stimulus items uh, literally at the very last moment. So we have multiple different groups and Congress members um, vying to add in things here, um, even right now. And um, they're not even at the very last moment yet. They're still negotiating on the top line number and all sorts of things to be added in here. We have multiple different advocacy groups um, adding in to add in more stimulus checks, $1,400, $2,000. So everything is very up for negotiation at this point. And uh, the other thing that's really going on right now is uh, Joe Manchin, Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat, and <laughs> Senator Kirsten Cinema, Democrat. Are they really still Democrats? That's kind of being under question right now. They're really in the hot seat. Check this out. The New York Times. Boy, I wouldn't want to have my name on the New York Times uh, with this type of headline. It says, opinion, it's an opinion piece. Is it time for Kirsten Cinema to leave the Democratic Party? Posted here today. Well, maybe you're watching this in the morning, so maybe it's from yesterday. Uh, but wow, what a! Uh, can you imagine seeing waking up or seeing this in the New York Times? And imagine this being you. Imagine you're Kirsten Cinema and seeing this plastered on the New York Times. <laughs> Wow, what a headline. Wouldn't that just make you just make your face go? Can you imagine seeing that? And, and imagine, you, imagine you being cursed in cinema. Imagine reading that. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't that make you just fall over? Yeah, yeah. Check out these headlines here going on right now. Cursed in cinema. She is just really just... Uh, getting a lot of heat right now. Uh, Kirsten Cinema is threatening to hold Biden's agenda hostage, report says. She wants to pass the bipartisan physical infrastructure, roads, and bridges bill now. You know, this uh, is from yesterday. Uh, Kirsten Cinema rakes in pharmaceutical and finance cash amid reconciliation negotiations. It says here in the subhead, and it's probably a little small for you to read, the senator raised more than $1.1 million in the third quarter. About 90% of it came from outside her home state in uh, campaign contributions. Yeah, this is from Politico. It says, Kirsten Cinema rakes in pharma, pharma and finance cash of $1.1 million in the third quarter. Yeah, my, my, my. Hand caught in the cookie jar, huh? And you wonder why it's so hard to pass uh, lower prescription drug pricing, huh? Yeah. Another headline here says, uh, Kirsten Cinema's poll numbers should terrify her. Hmm, imagine that. This says here, the left-leaning group, the Democratic, uh, it's a Democratic group, Data for Progress on Thursday released genuinely brutal poll numbers for Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema, whose very public role in holding up President Biden's agenda is clearly not well within her state's primary electorate. The survey of likely vo voters for her 2024 Democratic Senate primary shows just 25% approval rating for her performance in office. 
just 25% approval rating, that is unbelievably low. As opposed to 85% approval rating for Arizona's other Democratic Senator, Mark Kelly, and for President Biden himself. Wow. Tellingly, she trails all four of her hypothetical primary opponents by 29 percentage points or more. So it's safe to say that um, her own state, Arizona, at least in uh, Democrats' eyes, she's a Democrat, and uh, the people that elected her, which are Democrats, Republicans didn't elect her, I mean, uh, uh, she's a Democrat. Democrats are the ones that voted for her. Um, are not very happy with her performance. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. So uh, we'll see what happens here going forward. Now, it's a catch-22, though, for both Joe Manchin, whose approval rating is at an all-time low as well, and Kirsten Sinema. Um, because if Democrats lose both of those seats, then Republicans take over the Senate. So Democrats are unhappy with their performance. They're holding up the stimulus package. But yet if Democrats lose those seats, then they lose the Senate. So I, uh, ideally, like if you were thinking like a Democrat, again, I'm not from either party. I consider myself an independent, a realist. Um, what a lot of the progressive Democrats would ideally like to happen is to see them, both of those senators, in a perfect world, lose their primaries, what that means is that another Democratic candidate comes along and in the Democratic primaries uh, overtakes them for the Democratic candidate and another Democratic candidate beats them out for the position and then that Democratic candidate wins the Democratic senator seat versus another Republican. But that would be in a perfect world. So that means another Democratic candidate beats them out for the seat, and then that Democratic candidate also beats the Republican for the Senate seat in a perfect world if you're looking at it through the eyes of a Democrat. Of course, Republicans are just kind of sitting back saying, yeah, now's our time to win those two seats and take back the Senate. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can let me know your thoughts. And, uh, you know, of course, both parties think that uh, now is their time to shine. And, uh, you know, the next upcoming election uh, in November of 2022 is going to be a big one because Democrats say if this stimulus package and the next stimulus package, which they have now confirmed, there will be another stimulus package after this one with um, they're now kind of saying that maybe they should. Um, just kind of make this stimulus package right now a little bit smaller, um, pass what's on the table right now, make Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema just happy, take kind of what they can get past right now, then kind of work on the next one, get everybody happy, pass the bipartisan infrastructure package. So if they pass the stimulus package now, make it a little bit smaller, pass the bipartisan infrastructure package. Let a little bit of time settle, then go on to the next stimulus package and work on that one. So again, get everything passed, get the physical infrastructure package passed as well, get everybody happy, get the approval ratings up, and then work on the next stimulus package, which, you know, we'll have the child tax credits done, the adult tax credit, we'll have to see what all is in there, Medicare for seniors, we'll have to see what they can get done in this package what will be for the next package, and then we'll have to see what they end up putting in the next stimulus package. But Democrats have basically confirmed there will be another stimulus package. The question will have to be what will be in this stimulus package, what they can get done in this one, then pass the physical infrastructure package, which is roads, bridges, clean drinking water, will create millions of jobs for the United States over the course of the next 10 years. And then basically there will be another stimulus package. They basically confirm this now. And um, what will be in that? Will there be monthly checks for adults as well as they pass the monthly checks for children? In addition to the adult tax credits, uh, will that be something they pass before the midterm elections? 
Uh, will there, because I mean, again, everybody said that there would never be monthly stimulus checks, and then bam, they passed it for children. 65 million children are literally getting monthly checks every single month called the child tax credits. People said that would never happen. <laughs> People thought that was a pipe dream. And then, I mean, they literally made it happen in the third stimulus check package. So before the third stimulus check package, monthly checks were literally never a thing. They never existed before the third stimulus check package. And then uh, they made it happen. It became a reality. Uh, people thought, oh, that's a pipe dream. That'll never happen. Same thing. People said that about student loan forgiveness. Uh, student loan forgiveness will never happen. And now President Biden has now passed about $15 billion in student loan forgiveness. This is my most recent headline from Forbes. Biden has canceled $11.5 billion of student loans with the upcoming amount that is being forgiven here that they've said is kind of in process that'll be actually up to about 15 billion. Here's what this means for student loan forgiveness. So yeah, Biden has already canceled $11.5 billion of student loans. And uh, when all is said and done, because kind of what they've already confirmed, it'll be a total of about 15 billion. This is mostly for students, or not even just students, but uh, even people that are not students or haven't been students for a long time, but still have student loans. And you could have been a student 20 years ago and still have student loans. But for people that have disabilities, people that their school closed on them, people that their school defrauded them, and people that are in the public service, and uh, like teachers and um, people that work for the government and stuff like that. And um, there's all sorts of criteria that, uh, but uh, literally they've canceled almost $15 billion of student loans. And honestly, I think there's going to be a lot more to come. Remember that President Biden has said he's willing to do up to $10,000 of student loan forgiveness for every single person that has student loans. And I think there will be a lot more to come in the future, in the future, but probably after they pass this stimulus package. When we kind of look, look at all these things, these three items in green are the items that have recently been passed, the student loan forgiveness right here, the pause on student loans, anybody that has federal student loans doesn't have to pay on them at all until January 31st. That's a huge help for over 40 million people. And interest is paused, payments are paused, garnishments are paused, and the 25% SNAP increase that is on pre-pandemic levels, um, that just kicked in in October. So that's a big help for over 40 million people as well, 40 million different people. And all the items in black are also... Um, all the items under consideration for this stimulus package. And some of the items are going to be kicked over into the next stimulus package. And the next stimulus package um, will have all sorts of new items in there as well. Uh, of course, the big items for this package are the monthly stimulus checks for children, uh, possibly extended till 2025, but they're having to cut items now because to make the stimulus package lower. So it could be till 2022, which would be only one more year, 2023, which would be till two years or possibly till 2024, which would be three more years. Medicare expansion for seniors uh, to include hearing, dental, vision, and hearing aid coverage um, as well as lower the Medicare eligibility age to age uh, 60, which would include 20 to 25 million more seniors across the United States. Uh, that's a lot of people that would now be eligible for Medicare. So again, 25 million people potentially could now be eligible for Medicare. Again, all these items, uh, nothing set in stone. Every single item up here is up for negotiation or even on the chopping block, or could be or could not be included, including a forced stimulus check, could be included at the last minute or could not be included. They could include a forced stimulus check for as low as 5% of the total price of the stimulus package. Uh, two to $2.9 trillion is the current number they're looking at right now. Um, they could do that for as little as 5% of the stimulus package. In addition to the uh, monthly checks for the child tax credits. So um, that is still a consideration. They could still do it. Remember that the second stimulus check for the second one, the second stimulus check was added at the very last moment, literally six days before they passed the bill. Even after they wrote the bill, they added it in 
after they wrote the bill at the very last moment. It was the last addition that they added in at the very last moment. There's also an adult tax credit that is expected to be in there as well, probably for adults making under $50,000 and uh, waiting on details on that. It is probably something that we will get here after they write the bill and we will I will keep you updated on that. Lower prescription drug prices is a huge benefit that we are hoping to get past. The prescription drug pr uh, the or the pharmaceutical industry is fighting this tooth and nail they have billions and billions of dollars, and they're a very tough foe. Um, the long arm of the pharmaceutical industry is a fair, it's like fighting uh, Muhammad Ali in the ring and Mike Tyson at the same time. It's proving to be a very, very difficult task. But if they can get it done, if Bernie Sanders can get it done, it would mean for over 150 million people in the United States paying lower prescription prices every single month, literally a savings every single month for 150 million people in just in the United States. So, I mean, uh, it's a huge thing. It's a huge savings every month. And in some cases, a life-saving thing because a lot of people have to have prescriptions to save their life. So savings like that is literally life or death for a lot of people. So there's so many things on this list child care. They want to significantly reduce the cost, make it free for a lot of people. Um, even Bernie Sanders says that some working parents, mom goes to work, dad goes to work, and then they pay 30% of their income to child care because they're both going to work and they have to pay to watch, have somebody watch their kid. And a third of their income goes to child care. So uh, they want to have government subsidies for that, where some people will actually get it for free and you will pay no more than 7% of your income for that. They also want to make two years of free community college free so that at least you will have or pretty much anybody will have the option to go to community college for two years for free. With the cost of college at $25,000 a year or more now, at least there will be a free option for anybody so that um, you know minimum wage would not be an option for everybody, that you could at least go now and get a two-year degree from a community college and at least be able to work your way up the ranks. So yeah, there's a lot of different things in this package. I will keep you up to date here. There's all sorts of things that they're trying to add in here at the last moment and buying for position and everything. There's nothing set in stone because things are being added and subtracted and they're fighting for position and trying to add stimulus checks in, trying to take things out, trying to add things in and, and fighting up pharmaceutical companies and, and the health industry and all these things here at the last moment. So I'll keep you up to date here. Make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. Uh, literally just click subscribe and that's it. Uh, you can also click the bell icon that appears after you subscribe to get notifications when we go live, uh, which is every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can also click the share button down below to share this video with your friends and family so that they know what is going on with the next stimulus package and everything here in our country. You can click this video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video is brand new information about a new Social Security raise that was just announced by Social Security. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.